Hi, this is Peter from Anatomy Zone and in this tutorial we're going to take a look at the anatomy of the ulnar nerve. This video is a collaboration between Anatomy Zone and teachmeanatomy.info. Check out the links in the video description below for the associated articles to complement this video tutorial. The ulnar nerve is a major peripheral nerve of the upper limb. It's derived from the brachial plexus and is a continuation of the medial cord containing fibres from spinal roots C8 and T1. Check out my video series on the brachial plexus for more information on this topic. The ulnar nerve has both sensory and motor function. In terms of motor function, it innervates the muscles of the hand, apart from the thenar muscles and the two lateral lumbricals, which are innervated by the median nerve. In the forearm, the ulnar nerve innervates the flexor carpi ulnaris muscle and the medial half of the flexor digitorum profundus. In terms of its sensory function, it innervates the anterior and posterior surfaces of the medial one and a half fingers and the associated area on the palm of the hand. Let's take a look now at the anatomical cause of the ulnar nerve. After arising from the medial cord of the brachial plexus, the ulnar nerve descends down the medial side of the upper arm to the elbow. Proximally, here you can see that it lies medial to the axillary artery, and as it reaches the level of the middle arm, it penetrates through the medial intermuscular septum to enter the posterior compartment, where it then lies anterior to the medial head of the triceps brachii muscle. I've switched over to a medial view of the arm now, and you can see that at the elbow it passes posterior to the medial epicondyle to enter the forearm. At this point behind the medial epicondyle, the ulnar nerve is easily palpable and it's vulnerable to injury at this point. Rotating the model around anteriorly now, you can see how the nerve pierces the two heads of the flexor carpi ulnaris muscle to enter the forearm. Within the forearm, the ulnar nerve gives rise to three branches. You've got the muscular branches proximally, and then you've got the palmar cutaneous branch and the dorsal cutaneous branch distally. Looking proximally, you can see here the muscular branches which innervate the two muscles in the anterior compartment of the forearm. So on this model, you can see the flexor carpi ulnaris muscle here, and this is responsible for flexing and adducting the hand at the wrist. And this muscle is responsible for flexing the fingers. The remaining muscles within the anterior compartment of the forearm are innervated by the median nerve. The palmar cutaneous branch is not actually demonstrated on this model here but it is a small branch that arises from the middle of the forearm and it runs distally to supply the skin on the medial part of the palm. Moving distally now, you can see this branch here, the dorsal cutaneous branch, which passes posteriorly behind the tendon of the flexor carpi ulnaris to supply sensation to the dorsomedial aspect of the hand. At the wrist, the ulnar nerve travels superficially to the flexor retinaculum. It then enters the hand via the ulnar canal, or Guyon's canal. Within the hand itself, the ulnar nerve terminates by dividing into the superficial and deep branches immediately distal to the pisiform bone, which you can see here. The deep branch has mainly motor function, whereas the superficial branch has mainly sensory function. The majority of the intrinsic hand muscles are actually innervated by this deep branch of the ulnar nerve, and you can see it here running laterally along the deep aspect of the palm. On its route, it supplies the hypothenar muscles, which is the group of muscles associated with the little finger, and it also innervates some other muscles of the hand. These muscles include the medial two lumbricals, the adductor pollicis, and the interossei muscles of the hand. The remaining muscles of the hand, including the lateral two lumbricals and the thenar muscles, are innervated by the median nerve. 
Now the superficial branch has mainly sensory function and it's responsible for innovating the palmar surface of the medial one and a half fingers. In this diagram here, in the light blue shading, you can see the sensory distribution of the ulnar nerve in the hand. So that's a quick run through the anatomy of the ulnar nerve. For more anatomy articles, visit teachmeanatomy.info and for more videos, check out anatomyzone.com. Thank you for watching.